Welcome to a new Breed of Golf Live. It's Santa Breed. Excited to be with you again on a Friday at right around noon. We're, well, minute 20 afternoon. Excited to be able to help you with your game of golf. And I appreciate everybody getting involved in, in uh, what we're doing as we give away a bunch of products um, from all of our partners. We talk about Titleist and Footjoy. You obviously know about Pin Golf and Big Moss and, and V1 and everybody. We're going to talk about all these little different things that we're going to be giving away uh, to try to help you improve your game. Quick reminder for those of you that are just joining us for the first time, what we're going to do is we're going to spend the first half of this talking about a specific thing in the game. Today, we're going to talk about backswings and why backswings are so important, how you can work on it as we take the off season and turn it into the on season. We're going to improve your, your game, get you ready uh, by spring. So these are going to be fun things. But also, too, in the second half, we're going to now let you ask whatever questions that you want to ask. It could be, it could have to do with the backswing. It could have to do with putting. We've got everything all set up here and we're in really good shape to be able to help you improve your game. Make sure you tell people about what we're doing here uh, on Fridays. And also too, make sure you join us each and every Friday. If you can't, by the way, when the shows are done, they actually go back up to uh, YouTube. So you could just stay here on the, on the channel and watch whatever you want to watch. You can scrub ahead. You can, if there's certain parts you miss, maybe even if you want to take notes, that's up to you. Control yourself. Now, as we do all the time, let me introduce you to the gentleman behind the scenes, uh, Greg Ducharme and Steve Gibbs. And you can see Gibbs, he's got his Santa hat on this week. Nice job, Gibbs. -y. You're looking sharp, big boy. Yeah, and there's Greg over there. What does that say, Greg? Does that say jingle what? Jingle this. They jingle this. There you go. So, <laughs> The uh, the elf is at it. Elf do charm. Now today, we got a bunch of really cool stuff that we're doing for you, and I'm gonna first start out with this. We got our blessed poker chip ball markers. Now, over on a new breed of golf uh, and on Sirius XM, we gave away intending to give away 27 or 22 of these for 2022. We ended up giving away 37 of these, but we're gonna give away 10 more. 10 more to you all today, but you got to do a couple of little different things in order to, to, to be a part of this. And this is going to be random. We'll, we will let you know at the end of the show who is uh, who has been chosen, who are the 10 that have been chosen. And then what you'll end up doing is you'll end up sending an email to us at a new breed of golf at michaelbreed.com and you'll include an address and then we'll get that into the elf. We'll get those into the into uh, Santa sleigh, and we'll drop those off for you um, right in time for Christmas. Could be a great gift. And then for those of you who are interested in getting them, if you maybe didn't didn't win, or you want to get more than one of these, and they do come in various colors. You can see black. There's blue, lavender, red as well. Um, we ran out of uh, what did we run out of the navy? We ran out of the navy blue. Those were popular, and we're getting low on the green because the green is what we're giving away. We're giving away green, blessed poker chip ball markers to 10 of you. Now, here's what you have to do to do that. You got to make sure that you, what, sign up? What, what are we doing with this? To, to get the, the, the poker chip ball markers, we're letting you uh, sign up for what? You're going to subscribe to the YouTube subscribe channel. Subscribe to the YouTube channel. If you haven't already. And you're going to send an email to a new breed of golf at michaelbreed.com. That's what you're going to do. Which I'm also putting that in the in the chat as we speak. So make sure that, that you pay attention to the chat. The chat's going to give you the direction that you need to go in when it comes to getting yourself uh, a free, blessed, green poker chip. Also, too, by the way, and you know I've been telling you about this, my new favorite product for 2022, and that is the Pinned Golf Range Finder. We've got a nice discount for you here. How about this? This thing normally goes for 300 and. $29, you save $150, $150, nearly half off, $179 that you'll get it for. And all you have to do to, to, to get this pin range finder is jump over to pingolf.com, correct? That's and right. And then put that in there. Yep. What's code, the code? Breed. Code Breed. Code yep. Breed. And all and that is going to save 150 bucks. And that's all in the, in the description. It's all in the description as well. We also, Gibbsy, if you could, back us out. Because... This beautiful, you got you to gotta take that uh, pin golf range finder thing down, if you would. There you go. This right here, this is the, the let's do this putting mat. One of my favorite mats. I've been, I'm literally on this every day. You know how good I'm getting with this thing? Check this out. And I've got these little markers on this. This is just a six-foot putt. Not even paying attention. Just a nice straight move down the line. Oh, it didn't quite go in, but how good was that speed? Now I can't do that. I can't end on that note. So I know my aim was off. And now, yabba dabba do. 
So there you go. So we get that. We've got that covered. We've got a nice little discount for you on this. Let's do this, Matt. What's the what's the deal? 15% off. All you have to do is go over to bigmoss.com and the code is breed15. You see how we keep these codes all with breed makes it a whole lot easier. And then finally, so get over there to, to uh, bigmoss.com and you can get yourself one of these mats or any of the mats that are over there. You can save 15% on any of the mats. I prefer the let's do this mat. That's just me. You might find something else over there that you want. Great gift for this holiday season. And then finally, Greg, the other thing that we're doing is the V1. That's right. And for V1, you can get all those premium features that Michael uses for free uh, for seven days. All you got to do is go to the link in the description uh, and, and you can get that um, that free premium access for a week. So this is this is when he talks about all the all the different drawing tools that I get to use. Um, and, and look, I've been doing this with V1 for I don't even know. I'm going to say three decades I've been with V1. But if it's not three decades, it's just under it. It's not for 10 days. I've been doing this with them for a while. And I can tell you, this is the best tool for you to be able to improve your game. I've got it in all my, I use it all my, my phones. Obviously it's in the, in the studio here. And what it allows me to do is know what I'm doing with, you know what, I'm going to pay attention to my, my head and I'm taking the backswing. And now there's a nice drop down. I like seeing that nice drop down as I transition into the downswing. So that's what I like to see. I like to see this trail elbow, by the way, I like to see that sitting right on the shaft plane line and address. I like to see this, this uh, forearm paralleling that as we come into this downswing here, I like to see I like to see this club get on this shaft plane line right there. You can see the club head right there on the shaft plane line. Let me, let me go back up here. So the club head gets on the shaft plane line right there, and then it stays on that shaft plane line, toe touching. And now when I get into the strike, that club shaft matches right up to the shaft plane line that I had addressed. So when I'm looking at my golf swing and I'm checking to see, like, how am I doing? What does my swing look like? I'm using this V1 all the time. I am never not. I don't record my swing and then look at it and go, wow, that's a nice shirt that I've got. I'm glad, I'm glad Foot Joy said that. that's not where I am. I am, I am hyper critical of what I'm doing with my golf swing and how these certain positions that I'm paying attention to, how close am I to where I want, where my preference is. And of course, in this particular one, not bad. I better set that impact. Put this back up here. And then I'm going to close that up so you don't get bogged down by that. Okay. So those are the discounts that we got. The V1 thing, what are we doing with that? We're giving them seven days, seven, seven days, days to be able to use all these different tools that exist there. When you start thinking about what is it that you need to get better, understanding your golf swing is one thing, but consistency is another thing. And it's imperative for you for for you to beg for the consistency of motion you have to do something consistently and what i always like to say is is that if i set my cameras up the exact same way and i videotape my golf swing the exact same way i now know that my golf swing is is on or off every day and i'm telling you i'm on this stuff literally every day Every day I'm hitting a putt. Every day I'm making a golf swing. Every day I'm looking at my golf swing. Doesn't mean I'm saving the video. It just means every day I'm on this stuff. And that's how you're going to get better. And so we appreciate not just V1 for the offers that they've made, but also Big Moss. We appreciate Pin Golf. We appreciate all of our partners being a part of these things that we're doing to try to help you save some money. And by the way, great gifts for this holiday season. Now, I want to talk to you about making a better backswing and what are some of the things that you're trying to do when you make a backswing okay so i'm going to give you just the monarch notes to this or the fred flintstone version of a backswing the purpose of the backswing in my opinion is to wind your body up to create potential power that's one of the purposes of the backswing we're winding the body up to create potential power with this club head going into the golf ball and the other thing that the purpose of the backswing is, is to not mess up the club face. I want to have the club face be consistent with the shot shape that I'm trying to hit. So when I make a backswing, if I'm trying to hit a cut, I want to let this club face fan open a little bit so that my club face gets a little bit open so that I can hit a shot that's going to go down and it's going to be open face. And it's going to cut. Let me get some golf balls up here so that we 
So what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to make sure that there's consistency and predictability in what I'm doing in my, my shot, my outcome. And that comes from what I'm trying to do with my shot shape. And I will tell you, and I've told you this many times, I'm going to continue to tell you this, make sure that you have a single shot shape. You like to cut the ball, cut the ball. You want to draw the ball, draw the ball and commit to that. Make your golf swing, commit to that. If I want to hit a draw, now what I'm going to do is I might adjust what I'm doing with my address position. I'm going to adjust what I'm doing with my backswing. I'm going to keep that club face a little bit more shut in the backswing. Maybe let the, the club face go a little bit to the inside. And then I'm going to come out and I'm going to hit a really nice little draw here. In fact, Greg, if you could, maybe we could put a trace on this so that um, everybody could see the shape of the shot. And so what, what, what I want you to realize is, is that your goal in the backswing, build potential power by winding up. Don't mess up the, the club face, okay? Get the club face to speak to. That's a, that's a, a great one. He got that up, Gibbsy. If you could pull that full, you can see how that golf ball started out to the right and then drew back to the target there. And it was not, I mean, I'm not, I didn't swing hard at that, but the ball cooperated. It did what I wanted. It apexed at about 70 feet. Now, again, I wasn't swinging hard at that. That one was only moving about 106 miles an hour of ball speed there. So not a pile, but certainly enough to be able to shape the shot the way I wanted to. And what I can tell you is, is that when you're making a backswing, it has to marry to the shot that you're trying to hit. Okay. Backswings, particularly when you take the club to the inside or to the outside, it has an effect on what goes on to the club face. And also, too, what you're doing with your forearm and how you're lifting your arms, which is another very important part of this. Now, um, understand that in the golf swing, there is a winding up. There's a rotation that's going to take place in this backswing. There's also a lift that's going to happen. You set some angles. And when we start talking about lift, and this was one of the questions that came in, what are the things that are lifting in the backswing? Well, so what are things that lift the golf club? So if we go to a down the line, go to a camera one here, one of the things that's going to lift the club is the setting of the wrist. If you look at the club head, when I set my wrists, I lift the club head up into the air. Okay. And then the other thing that lifts the club into the air are my arms. So I can lift my arms without lifting the wrist. I can lift the wrist without lifting my arms. Now, those are some lifts that are taking place in uh, the backswing that I pay attention to. There are some people that want to lift this, this lead heel off the ground. So they make a swing and that lead heel is coming off the ground. Fine. You can lift that as well. That's not something that I think is mandatory. It is something that I think is an option, but I don't sit there. I, I, it's a lift, but it's not a mandated lift. What I can tell you is if you go back down to the line here, this, this club head right here is about three feet off the ground. My left hand is underneath my, my it's about, it's about midway between my knee and my hip. When I make a backswing at the top of the backswing, my hands are not here. And I've never seen anybody make a golf swing where at the top of their swing, their hands are here. Their hands are somewhere up here, maybe just under the shoulder line, maybe above the shoulder line. If, uh, if you're Justin Thomas and you're going to see him play uh, this weekend, his arms and hands are going to be up here like this. There's lift that takes place. And the lift is typically going to happen, like I said, with a setting of the wrist and also, too, with a lifting of the, of the arm. And that's going to be coming from shoulders. That's going to be coming from your shoulders. So if you don't have the ability to take your arm and go like this, if you can't get this to go up in the air like this, then you're not able to lift your shoulder. Maybe there's some impingement, maybe some, some weakness, whatever it may be, that is preventing you from getting the lift that you want in your swing. And by the way, you have to understand, you're going to have a range of motion that you're going to be able to do all this stuff when you're standing up this way. But when you're bent over and you've got a, a, a club here that's got weight to it, whatever the weight is of your particular club, given the shaft that you've got in there, the weight of the head, the weight of the grip and the length of the club, the, the weight is going to change. But my point is, is that when you're bent over and now you start lifting this up, do you have the strength to be able to lift this in this position? Because it's different lifting this way than lifting this way. Because now you've got an external rotation. Again, we talk about rotation. There's an external rotation that's happening in the trail shoulder that you now have to lift with your shoulder in an externally rotated position. Not an easy thing to do. And so if you don't have that strength, if you've got an impingement, now all of a sudden you're not going to be able to lift. And so a, a, a coach can talk to you all day long about lifting up your arms. And if your body isn't able to do it, 
you ain't getting no coke, as they said in Caddyshack. That's not going up in the air. You're going to be right in here like this. And when you're right in here like this, now all of a sudden you've got a flat swing. And you can play with this. You just have to understand that from here, again, given your height, from this position, your hands are going to have a lot of depth to it. Most times the club is going to be coming from the inside. Most times if you have very deep and low hands, you're going to hit a shot that's going to start out to the right-hand side or the push side. At that point, if it's out to the push side, you better have a shut club face or that ball isn't coming back. There's a nice look at what that did. So that started out right and it turned over to the left-hand side. So you can make stuff work. You just have to understand how to make it work, okay? So now I want to talk to you about things that that um, are important in building this backswing in this on season. So one of the things that I, I just mentioned to you was depth of hands, okay? So if we go into a down the line view and gives you, I would say the large majority of what we're going to be doing is going to be down the line. Maybe you get a, a camera seven or something like that, but for the most part, all this stuff is going to be down this line. Depth of hands is when my hands are sort of outside of my shoulders by a lot. So if I have really deep hands versus not so deep hands, you can see how it also alters the lift in my arms and the um, the plane of my lead for my lead arm. So really deep hands, flat lead arm. Not so deep hands, pretty upright lead arm. Okay, and that, as I said, has something to do with your ability to lift the golf club. It also has something to do with what you do at a dress. So go back over here. If I have a very weak lead hand and a very weak trail hand this club will tend to now go ahead down the line this club will tend to and maybe you can go split screen on some of these this 10 will tend this club will tend to work out and i'll tend to have a very um upright arm path hand path i won't they won't be very deep and so with this weakness and again my shoulders will be open typically when i get really weak with that grip now the club is going out like this now i better make sure that that club face stays open because i'm going to pull across this golf ball it can work We've seen players for a long, long time do this. But what you have to understand is you better control this club face because you are going to be, quote unquote, over the top. We're over the top. So I'm going to go weak and weak. Now my club face is going to be open. Now this club is going to go out this way. And now I'm hitting a shot that's going to start out and it's going to spin over to the push side. So I kept the club face open there. So that shot, that can work nicely. Start slightly to the left and curves over to the right-hand side. That can work nicely. And you got to make sure that these all marry up. Having said all that, how do I make sort of an, a, a, an ideal backswing? So let's first start talking about the rotations that are taking place in the body, okay? And it's this is going to be um, fairly simple to understand, but it's a little bit more complex than the way I'm going to share it with you, okay? Because you have to understand that as I talk about the rotation of my hips or my pelvis, there's also going to be rotations that are going to be taking place in, in my femur, in my, in my calves, in my feet, in my ankles. There's all kinds of rotation that are going to be taking place. And, and all of it going all the way down is gradually less. Simple way to say it. Simple way to say it. So when I take my shoulders, I mean, when I take my, my hips and I rotate them like this, I'm getting a little internal rotation coming out of this lead leg. I'm also getting a little external rotation coming out of that trail leg. It's moving this way. But here's the, and this is the hard part to understand about this. When this hip is rotating this way and this knee is going against that, it actually rotates internally. Let me say that again. That's why it's complicated, right? This hip is rotating in the backswing. These things are going against the grain. So this trail leg, even though there's some movement out, it's really rotating against the turn. Much the same way as when I take my shoulders and I turn them like this and I keep looking at you, my body is rotating, but my head is actually turning to the opposite side of where I'm rotating. You understand? So when I make a backswing, if I took, if I just did it with my, 
with my head, this would be the backswing. I would turn this way, and then I would turn this way. That's what a golf swing is with the head rotation. So my head's looking at you. My shoulders are turning this way. I've now rotated. Now go to a camera one here, Gibbsy. So now over here, you can see this whole side of the face, but I'm looking that way so you can't see this side of my face in that camera one shot, which means my head has gone like this. And now when I start to come down, let's go back to that split screen. Now, when I start to come down and I'm rotating my body like this, now my head is staying fixed on that golf ball and maybe even going back this way. Some people do that. Rory does that and others do that. There's a little bit of rotation back this way that's even greater than the rotation that you're getting. So as my shoulders now are getting into this position and I'm still looking down here, my face has, you can only see the trail side of my face. You can't see the lead side of my face in that, in that down the line view in that camera one shot. So what has an effect happened is my head has gone this way in the backswing and this way in the downswing. Well, in the backswing, the same thing is going on over here. So when these hips are rotating like this, this trail knee, this trip, this is rotating internally, even though there is initially some external rotation like that. So this knee is actually going to move out this way. At some point it braces and you get into an, an, an internal rotation from that lead leg. And for those of you that can't, I mean, from the trail leg, for those of you that can't externally rotate with the, the lead leg, can't do that, that's external rotation. If you can't, then what you're going to do is you're going to allow that foot to lift up and that's going to take some pressure off of that external rotation because now what you're doing is you're not freezing that up, you're allowing that to move. Everybody's body is different. I don't have I don't have one subscription for what goes on with this lead leg. I have a preference, and my preference is you keep your foot on the ground. That's my preference. But it does not mean that that is a mandate. The one, like there's a mandate, right? And I was having this conversation um, not long ago with, with an individual who I've worked with for a long time, Al Consoli, we affectionately call him Mander. And I was talking to Mander about some of the things that go on in the golf swing and specifically what happens in um in this term we call it um i call them elements people call them fundamentals what i have decided is is that they're the, the only fundamental the only fundamental is you got to hold the golf club you don't have to hold it with two hands you can hold it with one either way you can hold it with the the lead hand down or the trail hand down doesn't matter but this club is not going to move without you holding on to this somehow and by the way i know well, I don't know these individuals. I've seen individuals who have played golf because of um, different situations that have taken place, amputations and such, where they play golf where they hold this club underneath their arm like this and they swing the club like this. In fact, I'll never forget it. I went to go visit um, my middle brother when I was younger down in, in Georgia, and we played golf with a guy who had a, a, an issue um, where he had both of his arms amputated. I can't tell you what happened, but I just know that he had had him amputated and he had a, a club shaft that was very, very long and he had some padding on it. And he gripped the club like this and he swung like this and he hit the ball dead straight. It was awesome. Drove the cart actually, used his chest to drive the cart. It was phenomenal. The point is, is that the only real fundamental is you got to hold the club. Somehow you got to hold the club and there's a lot of ways to hold it, but this club isn't going to move without it being held. Absent of that, I've decided everything is an element. Holding the club is an element. Posture is an element. They're just elements. And once you get away from this a fundamental, this an element, now all of a sudden you can talk about these different elements, okay? So in this backswing, you gotta feel like there's a rotation that's taking place out of the hips. And obviously there's a rotation that's taking place out of the shoulders or out of the chest, however you wanna say it. But what is gonna happen is there's gonna be more of this rotation than there is of this rotation. We all know that. If I were to put on an overhead camera, the shoulders would turn greater than the hips. The hips are gonna go 45 degrees max. There are some that might get a little bit more, but they're not gonna turn the same amount. They just aren't. Shoulders are gonna turn way more than hips are gonna turn. And then in the downswing, we're sort of maintaining that, but we're talking about backswing right now. So you have to make sure that you can turn your body properly. And then within that, you have to figure out, well, how do I get the most out of this that I possibly can get? Do I have to narrow up my stance? Something that you can do without question. But these are tests that you have to give yourself. Can you stand over here with your feet narrow together and make a good rotation? Okay, great. So now if I put my feet together like this, I don't feel like I can get down to the ball. So now I got I to I just make a little 
alteration. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to get them a little wider, maybe not as wide as I want, but not as narrow as I, I also prefer. I'm, I'm sort of in the middle. Okay, now I'm in the middle and now I can get all the rotation that I need. I can make a good motion. The ball can have a little straightness to it. It can go kind of where I want it to go. I'm good. So your width of stance is going to allow or prevent rotation out of the hips, which will also allow or prevent rotation out of the upper body. So you have to make sure that you understand there's a rotation that's taking place and it's both coming out of this and out of this, but there's a lot of stuff that's going on in legs. There's a lot of stuff that's going on in, in, in arms and forearms and everything that's rotating. Okay. Now let me get some more golf balls over here because I'm going to get to uh, this next part, which is going to be rotation and lift. Okay. So when we make a backswing, let's assume now we're not talking about body. We're just talking about what's going on with arms here. Okay. So when we make a backswing, I now am going to start to lift this golf club. So this club is going to start to get up into the air. What's also happening is it's, uh, when I say it, the shaft and also to the arms themselves, there's rotation in that as well. So when we're taking the club back, we're lifting and rotating. And when we lift and we rotate, just go, just go down the line if you would here, Gibbsy. When we lift and we rotate, now what I do is I take the club head and I get it farther away from the target line. So this is the target line down here. Yeah, this, this line right here represents a target line. In fact, you know what I'm going to do for the time being, since I'm not going to hit a club, is I'm going to put this down here like this and give you an idea of the target line. So when I get up to the top of the, the backswing, the head of the golf club in my model is farther from that target line than the handle. I don't want the club head to cross the line at the top there. This is something that I learned from, from Butch Harmon and something that I have held on to in, in my uh, philosophies. I agree with this for a variety of different reasons. But what I will tell you is it has to do with how the club falls. So, for instance, if I take the club and I cross the line, I get over here like this, and I were to let go of this club, the head of the golf club will always stay out there relative to the handle. And the opposite... If I take this club and I go like this, the head of the golf club will always stay will always stay outside of the handle. And so what we want to do is we want the club to fall down or lay down or flatten out, however you want to say it, as we start the downswing. If I take the club and I put the head of the golf club behind the handle and I start going down this way, the weight, because there's way more weight over on this side of the club than there is on this side of the club, when I start to go down this way, that will help the shaft of the golf club lay down. And when it, when it lays down, now I have a chance of getting that club to come from the inside. So what I like to do is I like to make sure that when I'm taking the club back and I'm lifting, I'm rotating the, the forearms so that the head of the golf club can get back behind the handle of the golf club. So I'm in here like this. And I get there and you can see the head of the golf club is back over there. There it is back over there. There it is back over there. Now I get this and I do the same thing. And the club's back over there again. And again, relatively straight shot, kind of like that one. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm going to now turn the V1 on. I'm going to record this. And now I'm going to make my swing. So I'm going to lift and rotate. Go down the line if you would, Gibbsy. There you go. Great. So now we lift and rotate. So here, there's lift and rotate. So there's my shot. Now I come over here. Now I'm going to just draw a line right here. Roughly, club goes back, stays around that shaft plane line. Now I've rotated, and now I'm at the top of my swing. And so at the top of the swing, now I've got my forearm to to uh, parallel that initial shaft plane line. My trail elbow is sitting on top of the shaft plane line. And if I were to draw a line down the shaft of the golf club here, it's gonna be going in between my feet and the golf ball. You can see that there. Now, if I'm across the line at the top, in fact, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna make a swing where I go across the line at the top so you can understand the importance of that particular line. So when I take the club back and I don't rotate as I'm lifting and I go across and I go like that, that club is going to go across the line. Is that recording? 
yeah so now we're gonna go in here there now these are again lines that you can pay attention to when you're doing what when you're working on your golf game so here's my shaft plane line again now watch how different this looks when this goes back so now the club is going way inside my hands don't have as much lift so when i get to the club parallel to the ground the head of the club is way inside but so are the hands now i start to take the club and I go over here and now all of a sudden the club is across the line. So now watch what happens. Even though my elbow is above that shaft plane line, look at what's happened to my forearm. That's not going where I want it to go. And then if we draw this line down like this, this thing is nowhere near right here. In fact, let's just compare that. to this, let me erase all this over here. Those are the two different positions. And there are certain things that are completely different as well. Not only is, is the elbow, the trail elbow, this stuff in here different, but what also happens, my wrist positions are different, which means my club face is different which means everything is different because the face is the most important part of the thing. Remember I told you about the backswing. I don't want to mess up the face. Well, I just messed up the face over here. But also what happened is look at how there's space in between my knees over here. Look at this over here. There's not nearly as much space over there. And then you start looking at what's happening with the club face. You look at what happens with the face of my body. You look at what happens with the hip. Everything, only everything is different. So how do we make a great backswing? which is exactly what I want to talk to you about. And when I talk about planing a backswing, this is how you're going to improve. And by the way, this is also something that's going to help you in this on season. So let's go down the line here, if you would, for me, Gibbsy. And if we go to, yeah, right. So when I get set up here and I'm going to put this ball basically on this line right here, now I set this up, this club shaft, and this pipe are roughly the same. When I make a backswing, what I want to feel is that the line of this club shaft, when I'm at first parallel with my forearm, so it's actually second parallel, but first parallel with my forearm, when my forearm is parallel to the ground, not the club shaft parallel to the ground, but my forearm parallel to the ground, here, when I have that there, the shaft of the golf club and that PVC pipe are now, are now parallel to one another. So when my arm is parallel to the ground, the shaft is parallel to the ground. I mean, parallel to the, uh, to the PVC pipe, okay? So what I do is I make a backswing, and now I look here. And I would rather you, if you miss, miss this way than miss this way, okay? You're not perfect. So if you miss, miss this way, flaw that way. So here. There, I'll take that. I'll take that. So now I'm going to go here and there. Oh, I like that one. That was really good. That was really good. See if we can do something like that again. And I'm going to, I'm actually going to record this. And then I'm going to give you a drill, two drills, some two drills that I got to give you. And then we're going to open this up to some questions. Okay. And by the way, it, not, not for nothing, but thank you all so much for joining us. I can't tell you how much I love doing this. I can't tell you how much I appreciate you all listening to the radio show, watching the TV shows, watching this. It, it, it means the world to me. Like what I want for everybody to, I want everybody to play great golf. That's what I really want. They would be fantastic. And so I appreciate you all watching and hopefully this, this helps you get uh, better. So let's go back to that down the line shot. If you would, uh, Gibbsy. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make this backswing, feel this here. That's going to be a little laid off. And now I'm going to go up. So I'm going to get a little rotation and there. Now let's see what that looked like. So in here, so this is what I'm talking about. When I get, when I get done, I'm looking for this position right here. So when I draw that circle right there, I don't want to see the shaft of the golf club. I want my hands and the club head at what is called first parallel, when the shaft of the golf club is parallel to the ground, now all of a sudden, the, the I, I can't see it. 
That's ideal. That's what that little PVC pipe uh, uh, does. And then if I extend this PVC pipe up like this, what you can see is the head of the golf club is, is sitting on that. Now when we start to go up to here, now remember, I was only trying to stop that thing. Like that went a lot farther than I wanted it to go. But what you can see is if I take this and I now go down the club shaft and go down into here, now what I'm going to get is I'm going to get a line that's nearly, nearly parallel to this. It's not absolutely parallel to that, but it's nearly parallel to that. And I would rather that happen instead of this, let me shift colors, instead of this going like that. I don't want that blue line. I want that yellow line like that. Okay, so now we erase all that. And now what I do is I start to take this club and now we start to bring it down. And what you're going to notice is, is that this club now is going to come down. I hope it's not, not going to hit the pipe, but it's going to look like it's going to hit that pipe. And now all of a sudden it's right on the pipe. So now I've got the club traveling down the shaft plane line, which is exactly what I want to try to have happen. Head stays on that. And now when we square this up, what you're going to see is, is that that, if I extended this up like this, my hands are going to be right on that. Shift that to yellow. And now bring this back to the top of the swing. So this is the shaft plane that I had at absolute address. And now here's the shaft position at impact. And those are virtually identical. Okay. All right, so now, how do I teach myself? This is the fun part. I got two little things for you, and then we're going to open this up to some questions here, okay? So, first, one of the things that you can do, and you don't need to hit a golf ball to do this drill. This is why we call this the on-season. This is simply backswing stuff, and this is stuff that you can do in your house. So, what you're going to do is you're going to get set up. You don't need this pipe now. I'll get back to that in a second. You're going to take this club. You've got a pipe that's on the ground here. So let me put this shaft plane, I'm sorry, this uh, alignment stick right here. Okay? So there you go. So you can see it. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the club back with only my lead arm. And I'm going to push the, the head of the golf club always out to that thing. Now, what happens is when I start to push this out this way, Gibbsy, if you could take a seven and give me a close-up from about uh, waist high and down. Okay. Cause what I want to do is I want to show people how the, the uh, great shot. Now watch what happens with my hands and the club head. When I start to go down this line like this, what you're going to notice is, is that the shaft of the golf club starts to spin and the toe starts to open up a little bit this way. That is actually going to be a somewhat square position. So we go back here like this. The club is like that. And now when I get to where I'm, I'm not going to have the wrist set because I don't have the strength. So it's not going to be identical. But the point is, is that this is going to go down there and there's going to be what people would say is an opening of the club face. Give me a face on here. An opening of the club face. Whoops. Here we go. There you go. Try, give me a face on here, Gibbsy. Okay, great. So what we're going to do is when we push this like this and we go there, that it looks like the face is opened up, but it's still perpendicular to my chest which is square. So we go up here like this. Now we get up here and now I put my hand on and now you can see the shaft of the golf club. You're never going to get to this position with one hand only. You will never do it. There's, I, I, I can tell you right now, it's impossible. There's such a thing as impossible. Anyway, so we take the club back and we go like this, put this on and then swing down. Now this is a wonderful drill even when you're outside you go here, here, there. Try not to recoil. What I mean by recoil is you take the club back, you get to here, put that on, and then you go like that. When you recoil and you go for more, that's when you'll start to chuck the club across the line. So what you want to do is you want to let this club go back, put your hand on, keep it here, and then go down. I'm not worried about the contact. I'm not worried about the distance. I'm worried about the feel. Here, here, there. 
What you're also going to feel when you get to the top, and this is the obvious thing, when I start to go here and I put this here and I put my other hand on, what's fun is my left hand is to the left of my right hand. When we cross the line, my left hand is to the right of my right hand. I don't want that. I want my left hand to be the left of my right hand because now my arms haven't crisscrossed. They're here. So we take the club back, lead hand on, up here like this, boom, no recoil, down, solid strike, okay? All right, that's one of the drills that I want you to do. Here's the other drill that I want you to do. Now, this is gonna take me a second to set this up, but you can do this. You're gonna get yourself this little bungee cord, okay? So we got a bungee cord. And now what we're gonna do is, again, this is just me doing this stuff. I don't know that this is gonna work. I believe this is gonna work, okay? But I, I will show you how to do this if this doesn't work, you put this underneath here, okay? Slide this all the way down. So we set that up like that. Now, what you're gonna do is you're gonna stand away here. So go down the line, stand here like this. So you got this bungee cord here. And now what you're gonna do is you're gonna make a backswing and you're gonna go up. All right, hold on. Let's see if this works. Greg, I may need Greg. And we, Greg and I have talked about this. Sometimes, I'm at the ready. Sometimes you just got to go to the bullpen. So I go up here. This, I think, is going to... Yeah, it is. Okay, so you're going to have to come up here and just stand on that. Here's how you're going to solve this. Here, go this way because he's going to be standing there. Here's how you're going to solve this. You could take this thing and you could put this under a door, which was a great idea. Put it under the door, close the door. This comes out from under the door. So you put all this from here to here under the door. So the only thing that's coming out from the door, then, it, then it's not going to move. What you're going to do is you're going to make this swing. And now when you go up like this, you're going to be pulling away. So this is, as you start pulling, this resistance is going that way. When that resistance is going that way, you're going to pull this way. And that's going to go like that. If you go across the line, it's going to actually tip your forearm and it's going to pull it down. You won't have the strength. You're stronger this way than you are this way. So... You get in here like this, and you do this. And what happens is, thank you, Gregory, what's going to happen for you is this. And this is, this is really the fun part of this. When you take the club back and you get to here, the finishing of the backswing is just pulling up like this. You're literally just continuing to pull at a 45 degree angle that way. So you go, and when you pull that way, now all of a sudden the club is on a perfect plane. So let me show you what I mean. When I take all this, I get this out of here, get my bungee out of here. Got to get a ball in here. We're almost ready for, for your questions. By the way, Greg, have 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 we got uh, a number of people that have gotten in on the ball markers? We good? Yeah, but a good idea to remind again. But I have a couple winners so far. Okay, great. Uh, Ted, Jesse, Michael, and Charles. Um, so far, awesome. So we're giving away we're giving away these poker chip, these blessed poker chip ball markers. Ten people, you're gonna get these, but you got to do a you got to do something to earn these, right? You got to get in first of all. And how do you get in, Greg? You subscribe to this channel and send us an email to a new breed of golf at michaelbreed.com. So you got to su subscribe to our YouTube channel and send an email to a new breed of golf at michaelbreed.com. And that will enter you into the contest. And then we're going to choose 10 lucky now. Here's how this works. So we get in here like this. You feel this rotation and this lift. Your arms get to here, which is where we were. And now I'm going to take my arms. I'm going to pull them back this way. It's going to set the club. You can't believe it. It'll set the club. In fact, I'm going to, I'm going to record it. It'll set the club. And the club will will go on the plane that we want. So I'm not going to do this fast. Rotate and then up there. Rotate and up there. So rotate and up there. Now, let's see what I got. I love these things. So we're going to set this here. And now we take the club back. Club right on that shaft plane line. Beautiful. Now I start pushing back over there. Look at that position with that club. I mean, I'm not kidding you. This stuff works. What you got to do is you just got to do it. 
You just got to get in there and do the drill. Do the left-handed drill, set it that way, get it to the right. And then when you go up, you're making sure your right hand stays to the right of your left hand. And it goes up that way. So the club now, I go down that shaft plane again. And now I'm in between the ball and my toes. That's exactly what I want to have happen. So now the club goes up. Now we start coming down. There's no wobble. There's no nothing. Club's going to get on the shaft plane line. Boom and boom. There's your impact position. Body open, arm a little bit bent. I'd like it more than that, but the shaft is right on the line. The ball's coming out of the center of the club face. That is tremendous. And now, look at how simple this looks. So I'm going to do a little cutting. Now, watch what happens. I'm just going to... This is honestly exactly what I'm working on in my swing. When you start to watch this, you're going to start to see the hands are going to open up right at the start. You're going to see them open. Look at them open right there. So I'm opening up the club face. Shaft is where I want it at the top of the swing. Head doesn't cross the line. There's no wobble in the shaft at the top of the swing. Greg, you watch this swing a lot. That's pretty good. No wobble. There's no wobble there. You love that. I love that. Makes me happy. Now, Gibbsy, if you can give me a if you can give me a four into the corner here, because I want to I want to show everybody what has taken place with the horizontal launch and then also the spin. So I want to hit a cut. In fact, if you want to show everybody what that shape what that shot shape looked like right there, you can see what it did was it started to the left of the target and it spun right back to the center of the target. And I'm I'm not kidding you. I'm listen, it's not lucky, and I'm not a tremendously gifted athlete. It's just I've worked on these positions and I know what happens when the club goes there and I know these drills. What I've shared with you, these two drills are two of my favorite drills. You want to improve your backswing in this on season so you can be playing really good golf by spring? Do this. Let's do this. All right, so look at this. My horizontal launch, 1.6 left. Perfect what I want for a cut. Side spin, 432 to the right. Perfect what, what I want for a cut. So I started left, I turned to the right. You saw the outcome of the, of the shot shape. That's what happened. And that's how I achieve that through those drills. So what are you going to do in this, in this on season? You're going to do this drill, five minutes a night. Set up like this, hold the club like that, make a backswing here, put your hand on. What does that feel like? Notice the position of your, your trail wrist, your lead wrist. Feel that, hold that position right there. Where does your lead arm feel like it is? Where does your trail arm feel like it is? Hold that position right there. Where does the, if you had a beam of light coming out of this grip, where would that be pointing? Is that pointing back over here? Is that pointing over there? Make those motions, feel those positions. And then what you can do is you don't have to hit a golf ball, but I like making swings if you can. Maybe you run outside. I know it might be cold, but maybe you run outside for a minute and you try to make one or two or three good swings whatever you can tolerate and feel that so we come back here and then go let's get another one do the same exact thing so set up here back feel it okay good now here here oh that was really solid right there do those little drills. Get that bungee. Do that bungee inside. It's a wonderful, wonderful drill. Both of them, but that one with the bungee is a wonderful drill to give you the resistance. It's going to, remember I was telling you before early on that maybe there was a strength issue. That thing there is a wonderful strength uh, trainer. It's going to teach you how to get those arms to, to lift. It's going to put that pressure on your shoulder so that you can lift while maintaining your posture. All right. All right, Greg, let's get some questions here. Okay, first one from Pat. Uh, it says, love the show, guys, and appreciate the hard work. One question. How often do you suggest checking progress? Doing the work, uh, doing the work, do we get feedback weekly, two times a week? Uh, what have you seen work best? Yes, and yes, and yes. I mean, th the simplest way is to say it is this. If you look at the very best in the world, the very best in the world have a swing coach with them almost all the time at every major championship, but at all, almost all the time. And what also happens is there's video that, that works. This is why that V1 stuff is so important. I work with players 
that aren't in my in my town. They're not in my in my studio. They're not at my academy. And they send me a video. Like I've got a guy that I teach who's down in Florida right now. Sends me a video. What do you think? I look at it. It looks good. It looks good. And so how often should you do this? Yes. All the time. All the time. I'm in, I'm doing it every day. Every day. And if it's not every day, then my swing can can get off a little bit. Right? So during the holiday times when, you know what, it's, it's hard for me to say, hey, sweetheart, you take care of everything that's going on. I got to go hit balls for 15 minutes. Not a big hit. That's not a big idea. I'm telling you, I've had ideas. I've had good ones. That's not a good one. And what I can promise you is, is that I'm not going to do that. So what do I try to do? I try to steal, I try to steal time. I try to get in here a little bit early. I'm going to get up. I come down here. So I'm not interrupting or I stay up five minutes late. So I'm not interrupting all the time. You got to do it all the time. Okay. All right, Gregory, go ahead. Okay. This one from Michael. My bad miss is with pulling shots left. I'm a 10, I'm a 10 handicap golfer with some mid 70 rounds. Is backswing the problem? I normally hit fades with an occasional draw. But before you answer that, he also sent another one uh, that may have an impact. Uh, I was recently diagnosed with disc deterioration and severe arthritis in the lower back. Uh, um, any help with the backswing or exercises to keep playing in the future? I'm okay. not sure those two are related. Okay. So there's a couple of things that I would suggest here, first of all, and I mean this, and you just, you got to accept the fact I'm not a doctor. I'm not going to pretend to be a doctor. I know what I'm good at and I know what I'm not good at. You might call me a doctor of a golf swing. I've been called that before. Okay. I'll take that doctorship, but nobody's calling me doctor because I'm a doctor of a golf swing. So when it comes to your back, wrong guy to, to ask. Okay. I wouldn't know the first uh, things that would that you are or aren't able to do as a result of that. What I can say to you is, if it were me and I were in that situation, you've got some disc deterioration. What I would tell you is, is that that, and again, I don't know what I'm talking about, but I, I can say this, but I would talk to my to my doctor. Okay, so I'm going to tell you this, but you're going to talk to your doctor first. So go ahead to a, a down the line shot. So when you have disc deterioration. What you don't want to do is you don't want to separate your hips from your shoulders. So that's going to put some, as you start to put some, some turning into this, it's going to really put some pressure on all this. So what I would suggest is, is that you've got to let your hips have a little bit more freedom. And, and when you do that, if your hips turn, and again, I know I talked about in a perfect world, your hips are going to turn 45 and your shoulders are going to turn 90. But in your situation, the hips are going to turn 90 and the shoulders are going to turn 90. So in effect, what you're going to do is you're going to take this and you're going to do this, except your feet are going to be here, but your body is going to be over here, right? So how do we do that? Well, one thing that you could do, and again, talk to your doctor, like talk to your doctor, talk to your doctor. Take your feet and just stagger them a little bit, which will set your shoulders a little bit closed, which will allow you to have a little bit more freedom in here. You're probably not going to get to 90, but you might be able to get to 70, okay? So you set up like this with your feet staggered. Do a split screen here, Gibbsy. Yeah, so you got them there. See how close they are together? So my, my heels are sort of more or less underneath my hips. But because this right foot is back a little bit, my hips are a little bit shut. Now I have a freedom to rotate my hips there. Again, not 90, but almost. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do this, allow my hips to rotate here, and then I'm going to hit my shot. Now, what I would tell you to do, again, these are bad things you probably don't want to hear, but this is just the way it is. Right now, you're hitting cuts and slices because you can't turn this and you're hitting pulls because you can't turn this. Okay. So the difference between the pull and the slice, the pull slice is the club face. That's it. The path is basically identical, but the face is closed in one situation and open in another. And so it will go a little more to the left when the club face is closed, it'll go a little bit more to the left and then it will stay left. And with a club face, that's a little bit open. It won't go, it won't start as far left and it'll curve to the right. So what I would suggest that you do is try to teach yourself a draw. So go ahead, full again, if you could. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this foot. I'm going to drop it back like this. I'm going to take my golf ball. I'm going to move that ball position back like that. I'm going to take the grip. I'm going to strengthen that grip up a little bit. And then I'm going to just go 
like that. And what I'm going to get is I'm going to get a pretty good solid strike with a little bit of left turn, and I'm going to start to hit some draws. You'll get more distance because you're making a bigger turn because you basically have unlocked the rotation of the body. So that's what I would tell you to do. But let me emphasize this. Give me a, uh, give me a five here, and, and let me get – here's what I would tell you to do. Go see a doctor. Make sure that works, okay? I appreciate the question. Go ahead. Thanks, Doc. Yeah, you got uh, When you say wind up, wait, this, who, this is who's... from Curious Golfers. Okay. When you say wind up, is that coiling and uncoiling or loading up similar to tennis? So it's, it's, when I say wind up, I'm not saying unwind. I'm just saying wind up. So it's coiling, not end uncoiling. Okay. So I'm winding up. I'm getting my body to rotate. Is that similar to tennis? It is similar to tennis in many ways. The difference is, is that tennis is a one-sided sport. So if I'm going to make a forehand, and I mean, again, this is, this is second nature for me. I'm going to make a forehand. I don't have to turn my lower body a lot because my arm can get back here. I could get, if I have to go back there with my lead arm, I can't get back there. Go back to that face on for me. I can't get back there. But if I'm playing tennis, I can get over here very easily and then I can go like that. So I can create because my arm can move back this way. I don't have anything crossing my center line. When you cross this center line, that's a weak position. When this doesn't cross the center line, it's a strong position. So my hand over here, I haven't really turned. To go from here to here, I haven't turned my chest. But it's a wind up because I've rotated that shoulder. So wind up here, wind up there, boom. Okay? So it's a wind up. Is it similar to tennis? Yes, but no. Because it's, I got one arm versus two arms. Big difference. Okay? All right, go ahead. Uh, this is from Matt. I've never been accused of being the most flexible person. How can I increase my backswing? I can't seem to bring the club back as far as I'd like. Okay. So we talked about this earlier in the lift, right? So when you can't create rotation, now we need to create lift, right? Because lift is going to be able to give us some speed. So how do I get lift when I can't get rotation? Well, now there are two things that are lifting. Shoulders are lifting and wrists are lifting. Well, wrists are easier to lift than shoulders. So if we go down the line here, if I get set up like this and I don't do any turning with my body and I lift and then I lift. So here's lift and lift. So now I can make a swing. I've got the freedom to make a move. I didn't put it in the green. So here we go. So I'm here. I set up, take the club back, go face on two. So I go there. Now I start to lift like here. Look at how much that club has traveled. See, the club head with no lift is parallel to the ground. And with lift, it's almost perpendicular to the ground. So I moved that club, what, maybe three, four feet? Just by hinging, just by lifting. So when I take the club back and I lift both my shoulders and I lift my arms, now I don't know. Uh, you know what? I'm going to record this because I just want to see this. So now I'm going to shift the camera angle to camera two here. And then I'm going to record this. Now I'm going to show you no turn, just lift out of the arms, lift out of the hands. So there's that swing. Now that golf ball, let's just see the ball speed on that. That ball speed is 106 miles an hour. That six iron that I hit went 166 yards. Normally 175 is what I'll get. But watch this. So there's no there's no turn going on in, in the body there at all. Shoulders are here. I mean, that's that's nothing. Literally nothing. But look at the golf club. It's traveled there. Look at the angle between the forearm and the and the club shaft. That's pretty significant. That's just setting, that's just letting the wrist go. There I am at the top of the swing. That club head is way over here. It's going to go. That club head now is going to travel all this way down to here. If I took that line and straightened that out, it would probably be this long. Probably be that long. And that's a whole lot better than just taking it back a short distance because now this club can travel a lot faster. If I take the club back, if I take the club back without any lift 
and no turn, that's that. That ball, so the, the first one I hit had a ball speed of 106 miles an hour, and that one there had a ball speed of 82. So I picked up, what, 24 miles an hour of, of ball speed with the same amount of body motion, just some lift in the arms and some lift in the wrist. So what I would tell you is, how do you do it? You got to let your wrist hinge. And what I would tell you first to do is strengthen up the grip so that you rotate both of your hands to the trail side. If you're right-handed, that's right. If you're left-handed, that's left. Rotate them to the trail side. And then what you're going to do is you're going to let those wrists hinge. You let those arms lift. And as you do all that, all of a sudden that club, it won't get to parallel, but it's going to get close. And you're going to get greater club head speed. And when you get that greater club head speed, you're going to get more distance. Okay? All right, Gregory. Okay, this one uh, also from a, a different Michael. Speaking of internal, external rotation, what do you do with limited rotation, especially when you had rotator cuff surgery on both shoulders? Okay, so now we've got some limited rotation with our shoulders, which is going to have something to do with uh, lift. That's going to affect lift. Okay, so again, I go back to the question that was asked earlier, and again, we get into the doctor's office. I am not that doctor. So, oh, by would... the way, Michael, the other Michael, first Michael, has a doctor's appointment next week. That's my boy. That's my boy. All right. I love this. I'm not kidding you. I love this stuff. I cannot tell you how much fun this is for me. And I know I speak for everybody on our team, man. We love being able to help you play great golf. There's nothing more rewarding than when we get the email a month or a month and a half later and say, you know what? You helped me out with this. I started doing that and I shot my best score. Or I'm hitting the ball farther than ever, whatever. That's our reward. And we appreciate you all being a part of, of our community so much. So thank you. Um, all right. So back to this question, the shoulders, we don't have a lot of lift out of the shoulders, but we can still make a good deal of turn. Remember I said before, if I don't have a lot of lift, I'm going to have hands that are a little bit low, but they're going to be deep. So depth is going to help you. So what you're going to do, again, I go back to that other thing, stagger the feet, make this rotation. Don't try to get a lot of lift in the arms, just rotate and then use your rotation to kind of bring that club around and, and move the club with some speed. That one there, I guarantee you that thing's going to be close to 110. 112. I got 112 in the ball speed. Now, in order for you to do that, you got to do a couple things. One, again, I go back to this, this grip uh, getting a little bit stronger. You got to rotate it to the trail shoulder. That's a really important part of this. Get that body to, to um, move a little bit more, but that club face has to be closed because the path is now going to be going way out to the right. That club there, the vertical launch, pull that up again. See this vertical launch that's right here? This vertical launch at 13.5, that thing is telling you it's not getting very high. And then look at the horizontal launch right below that. That thing there is 7.1. So it's going way out to the right and really low because the club is so flat as it approaches there. It's not lifting the ball up in the air. There's not a great deal of spin. That spin only had 4,400 RPMs of spin. Why? Because that had nearly 1,000 RPMs of, of hook spin. And so what you're going to do is don't, don't try to do something that you can't do, right? You're telling yourself, I got to lift my arms up, but I can't lift my arms up, but I got to lift my arms up, but my arms don't want to lift up in the air, but I got to get them up there. But my body says, no, my brain says, yes. My body goes, no, who's going to win your body. You're not doing it. So let's do what your body can do. And you go, well, let's keep it over here and not try to lift your body goes. That's a great idea. Wish you to come up with that about a decade ago. Well, yeah, stagger, strengthen, whip it in here, rip it over there. Make a nice little, look at that Burt Bly 11 curveball. That thing, I mean, is moving left. What's the ball speed on this one? This might be north of 112. Ah, uh, 110. Still pretty good. Point is, don't do what your body can't do. I'll go back to the other thing. Gibbsy, give me that seven, if you would. No, no, I'm sorry, five. My fault, five. Okay, let me do this again. Ready? <laughs> go see a doctor. <laughs> <laughs> all right go ahead greg what do you got uh scott says happy holidays man uh rory talks about keeping his hands in front of his chest on the backswing any drills or feels i can use to work on this yeah so there are a couple things that that uh i like to do in order for me to keep my 
my club. And this, this, by the way, might be a split with a one and a three, believe it or not. I know that's asking for a lot for you, but you got to dial this up. So here's what I would tell you. The first drill I would do is I'm going to take the club shaft and I'm going to put it into my belly button so that it's dead perpendicular to my chest. And then when I take the club back, what I want to do, that's awesome, Gibbsy. You are a doctor. A doctor. That's <laughs> Dr. Gibbs. So go like this. And now when I get to where I'm at three, now the shaft is still perpendicular to my chest or my shoulders. So what I'm doing is I'm doing this. Now, what are the things that you notice? Well, the first thing is, is that when I did this, the club didn't wave across my body. It moved back with a little bit of patience, which is what you have to do. In order to keep the club a little bit more in front of your body, you got to move this club back with some patience. So we got to do this, okay? Second thing is that you're going to notice is my trail arm hasn't bent. The way the club gets behind you is when this club bends. When I bend here like this, that's going behind you. You're not bending that club, that, that elbow, without that club going behind you. So the trail arm stays straight. And the final thing is, I want this trail hip to turn. If the trail hip doesn't turn right away and I move the club back, the club will not be in front of me. So what I have to do is, I have to let this trail hip turn, keep the trail arm straight. So I go like this. And now that club head is in front of me. So now... I got the club out in front. I can turn that ball over to the right. If I want to hit a fade, I can do that as well. But you want to make sure that this trail hip is going to move and that trail arm is going to stay straight. Those two things. And if you watch Rory, what you're going to notice with Rory is he's a little bit more flexible than any of us, frankly. So his hip isn't going to move quite as viciously as I moved mine or you need to move yours. But what is true is look at his his trail arm and his trail arm is going to stay straight really long and you know who else is going to do that tiger's going to do that he's going to keep that arm very very straight in the backswing it's a it's a great way to create width in the in the backswing it's also a great way to keep that club in front of you okay i'm a big fan of i've never been i shouldn't say that since i've been teaching I've always been more focused on the length of the trail arm than the length of the lead arm. I used to read all the time. If you want to make a great golf swing, you have to have that lead arm dead straight. Well, I don't think that's true. I think that is for most, but not all. But what I do know is if I want to create width, I need that trail arm to stay straight. That is true. And so when the trail arm stays straight, now all of a sudden I've got a chance to have that club in front of me and particularly not just in the backswing, but particularly in the downswing. Okay. All right. Go ahead. This one's from Arthur. Uh, you've spent many appointments dealing with a question like this. Okay. It's a good one. I put my left wrist into extension and my right wrist in deflection at the top of my backswing. Uh, he's a right-handed player. I get long and across the line. Yep. 63 years old, in good shape, six index. Do you have any drills to help this? Okay. Well, first of all, we all know that that's not what we want to do. Second is, is that I would, I, I would do a couple of things and that little drill that I did with the PVC pipe and making sure that I was pointing the shaft of the golf club above the, the, the target line or the ball line, that would be a really important thing for you to get to there. But the answer is, here's how you do this. First of all, why do you do what you do? Because when you take the club back, you're, you're rotating the shaft clockwise in the backswing. So if I take... Go ahead and take a, a, a five in here, Gibbsy, and get close to me, but just pan down just a little bit. Yeah, right there. Good. So when I take the club back and I rotate like that, you can see how the club face now opens up. Just drop down a little bit more, back it out. Yeah. So I go here. Make sure you can see the club face. So drop it down. There you go. Good. So now when I take the club back and I rotate the club clockwise or the shaft clockwise, the wrist cups, the face opens. Now... When I go up to the top and the down the line view and I go from here and then I go like this, now all of a sudden it goes across the line and I get this and I get that, which we don't want. So what we have to do is we have to do the opposite. And the opposite is, again, go back to that up close. The opposite is going to be we're going to rotate the club counterclockwise. Now when I rotate the club counterclockwise, look at what happened with 
my right wrist. It's now in a sort of cup position and my lead wrist is in a bowed position and the face is down. And now when I take that and I go up to the top of the swing, now all of a sudden I've got bowed and I've got cupped, which is exactly what I want to try to do. So what I would suggest is if you're in that position, I would take the club back and I would feel like I was rotating this this way. So we go like this, up here like that, down like that. I'm going to get the ball to go to the left. That's what's going to happen. So I would feel that. That would be probably my number one go-to um, that would help me. I'll also tell you that one of my favorite drills to do in this situation too, and keep it full here, is, is I'm going to make half swings. I'm going to go back. When I go half back, I want the face of the golf club to point to the ground. So I'm going to rotate it like this and rotate it like that. And what you're going to see that's going to happen, if I were to hit 20 of these, and I'm just going to hit a couple. That one there started three and a half degrees to the left. You can see that start line. Pull that thing up with the, the trace of the ball. You can see that started to the left. Not a lot of curve there. Okay, so now I'm going to do the same thing again. Take that club face. I'm going to rotate that shaft. So it's going counterclockwise there. And now I hit that shot there. This one here was even more solid. That one started on the line. It's going to go a little bit farther. And... The trace, wait for the trace, Gibbsy, if you would. And you can see how straight that went. And so all of a sudden, normally when people hit these partial shots with a club like this, a six iron, you're going to get some fade out of that. That'll cut a little bit. When that starts to happen and it's bleeding, you know that you've opened up that club face. Well, neither of those shots went any, they didn't move at all to the right. They went just dead straight. So that's another really, really good um, drill for you to do and get a get used to this twisting this way. Okay. And then finally, what I would do is, and this is what I do as a coach, as a coach, if somebody's trying to take, if somebody's taking the club and fanning it open this way, what I'll do is I'll actually grab the club and I twist the shaft open. And I tell my student to resist the opening. So I'll stand there. I'll twist it. I want you to resist it. So I twist and you resist. See how they rhyme? And what ends up happening is you get used to the resisting of that. And all of a sudden you're here and you resist. And now you're going to hit a shot. And the next thing you know, the thing is going to take off. And it's not only going to start to the pull side, but it's going to move to the pull side. It's going to hook to the pull side. That one there had a thousand RPMs of left spin. Look at that shot shape. If you would, Gibbsy, pull up that. Look at that. See how much that went left? That's just with me just twisting that club in a counterclockwise rotation. And that's how you get control of that position of your wrists and ultimately the club face, okay? And that will also get you from having too long of a swing and going across the line at the top, okay? Interesting. Uh, um, I have a quick follow-up question from Michael who had the rotator cuff surgery. Okay. Do you do anything with the ball position in that drill? I mean, that's where you did the closed stance? Yeah. If, if you do anything with the ball position and I would, I would invite you to do that, you would move it farther back. Because once the shoulders get more closed, the path is coming from the inside. It's parallel to the ground more. It's not as steep in its angle of attack. So I would move it back. But a lot of that is going to have to do with how much you strengthen your grip. And that's going to be sort of, I hate to say this, self-discovery. So as you start to do this, you start to see the self-discovery and go, hey, when I play it here, I get this. And when I play it here, I get this. Okay. So a little self-discovery, but yeah, I would move, I would feel like Okay, I'm going to move that back. And what I would also tell you is, Michael, that is a wonderful question to immediately default to ball position because that tells me that you really understand what's going on. That's a fantastic question. Well done. This okay. one is from a BMP, and Jeremy also has the same question. Okay. Uh, best drills for a weight shift, uh, getting off the back foot. This would be a downswing thing. Okay. So what we want to try to do is we want to try to get our weight distribution over to the lead leg. There's a lot of different things that that um, you can do with this, but the the simplest one to do, and again, this is a drill, is so here's your setup position here. What I want you to do is I want you to take your trail foot, you're gonna move it back a little bit and put your lead foot back with it. Okay. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna start here like this. When you make a backswing, you start striding. So we're gonna make a backswing, start striding, and then go. Okay, so let me do it again. So feet are together. This goes back here like this. Now I'm over here like this. I'm going to go back and step and go through. And then what you do is you start to feel, what is it that I'm doing? 
most people, even though they're striding with that foot, they're actually moving their upper body. You start feeling the upper body moving forward. And you might even start feeling the upper body moving forward and opening. So now you go. And when you start to do that, you go, wow, that felt really easy. That's what you're going to feel. That felt really easy. And then what you're going to do is you're going to get in here with your feet this way, but you're going to see yourself starting back here. So you're going to start back here. And the second this thing starts, to, you're going to start to go with your upper body. So you're going to go. And the upper body is going to go and move into the shot. And then finally, when you're done with this, this is the other part that I love about this. So I've swung through. My trail foot is on the toe. I need to be able to tap my toe three times. Three times on the toe. So you get here like this. You go hit. Don't follow the ball. One, two, three. If you can't do it three times, you've got a little bit of weight back here. Like there are people that'll go and their, their chest is kind of back like this. And then you, you almost have to shift it so you can tap and you're not there. You haven't done enough of it. I want three taps. So we go set up like this. One, two, three. Brilliant. Now that's the drill. When we get to going and we start to feel, and you may fall into a different swing thought. Some people, some people will fall into this swing thought of getting this trail shoulder in front of the golf ball before they hit it. You won't do it, but it feels like that. So you get in here like this, and you go, okay, that right shoulder, my right shoulder is going to get in front of that golf ball before I hit this. And now you go, wow, that felt so freeing. That felt so balanced. And you start to, okay. I know what that feels like now. I just feel like my trail shoulder is just whoosh, moving way forward. And then you start, if you're a baseball player, wow, I feel like a pitcher, football player. Wow, I feel like a quarterback. If you're a bowler, wow, I feel like a bowler. Because this shoulder is not staying back here. I want to go this way, but this is going that way. You don't feel like an athlete at all. That little move, get through, tap it three times, home run. Okay, this one. From Richard, uh, from a full backswing, how do you get your right arm to be bent at impact? <laughs> uh, you know what, Greg? I could tell you this. I know you well enough to know this. We probably have a lot of questions that are in there. And you <laughs> went through that question. You went, oh, he loves this question. We <laughs> yes. got to talk about this. Yeah. Because he loves this well, question. And it's relevant, too. You were just talking about it with our friend Mander. I thought yes. it would be a good. Uh, okay. Good. That's a good pick. Who's this from? Who's this This is from? Richard. Richard. One of our poker chip give, uh, winners. By oh, the is way. that right? Yeah. Do we have all of our 10? We have all 10. Yes. Let's read off who our 10 winners are. This is great. And the winners are Ted, Jesse. Michael, Charles, Howell, uh, Charles, I'm sorry, I almost said Charles. Charles Howell, Howell the third. <laughs> no, it's it, Charles, Daniel, Richard, Bobby, Nancy, Ava. Hey, Matt, Nancy and Ava. And Michael. Oh, fantastic. That's great. Okay, now look, I know there are some of you that didn't get those, those poker chip ball markers. If you're interested in getting them for Christmas, they're six bucks. That includes all the hard work for Elf Ducharme to, to pick them. And put them in the and put them in the envelope and get them over to you. If you want a poker chip ball marker for Christmas, not just green, we're giving away green, but not just green. There are your choices right there. You've got the lavender, the red. You've got the blue, which I love, my favorite. I'm a I'm a blue guy, um, but there's also black and then of course green. So we've got still options, but we're only giving away the green during this uh, during this Christmas time. Okay. Um, just send an email to me at a new breed of golf at michaelbreed.com. Say, yeah, I'd like to get a, a poker chip or, and, and it's a PayPal experience. I'd like to get two or three or four or 50, whatever it is that you want. We will happily, uh, we'll happily get those into the mail to you. And we certainly appreciate you all watching us here. Okay. So Richard wants to know, how do I keep this, this elbow bent? Okay. So there's a couple of ways to do this. Now, for those of you who have rushed out and gotten your bungee, which I love, you're going to take your bungee, you're going to hold it like this, wrap it around that elbow, and then pull tight. So now I'm here. 
my arm is here. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to make this motion down, but I'm not going to let that bend. How am I going to get my hand, my fingers straight on? If you would, Gibbsy, how am I going to get my fingers to the golf ball without bending my, without straightening out my arm? Well, the only way is to rotate the, the chest, rotate the hips, rotate the body. So I go here and here. So the way the golf swing is going to work is I'm going to go from straight to bent, bent to straight. Okay. So I'm going straight to bent, bent to straight. So what I do here is this. I go straight to bent. I stop. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take bend and I'm going to go to the golf ball. And what you're going to realize is that club head is nowhere near that golf ball. So in order for me to do this, when I go down, I rotate, I got to drop down this way and then I got to keep rotating. Okay, now I got a chance. Now, as long as you're within six inches, there's a speed and a centrifugal force that's going to pull the club head down here and it's going to straighten up your arm a little bit. It's not the same bend. The bend that I have at the top of my backswing here is not the same bend that I have here, but it's close. Okay. It's close. It's not straight. I don't want straight. So here's how you do this. You make a backswing straight, bent, bent, straight. So you do this drill, bent, straight. Bent, straight. You get used to straight happening parallel to the ground on the target side of the golf ball. Bent, straight. Bent, straight. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go here. Bent, straight. Most of you will hit it thin, actually. Here, so bent, straight what you start to feel what i believe it or not when i do this i feel like um joaquin i feel like my right shoulder is so low when i get down to that ball my arm is so bent i'm so low and when i get through it i feel like i got a tremendous amount of right side bend i'm tilted to the right side so here bent there i also start to feel my feet work totally differently i feel my feet moving almost within my shoe okay so here bent there I'm not trying i'm not worried about contact what i'm worried about is what do i feel like when i'm going through that shot now i'm going to hit this and this i promise you of all the shots that I've hit today, this will be the fastest because the power in the golf swing, my opinion, the power in the golf swing is coming from the straightening or the punching of the trail arm. When I go like this, that's what's going to create the speed. So I'm going to go straight to bent. I'm going to go bent, 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 straight. Now in the downswing, this will be straightening out, but it doesn't get straight at impact. You know what? I know what you all are thinking. You're thinking, hey, I want to see, I want to see what this looks like when he does it. Now, here's the other thing. What you feel and what's real are different. That is not like covering my tail here. Okay. I'm not doing that. I'm just trying to tell you what you feel and what's real are not the same. So here we go. So I'm going straight, bent, bent, straight. Here we go. Now, before we show you what happened, let's just show you the numbers. So come on up here to the front, Gibbsy, and let's look at what happened. So my ball speed on that one jumped up to 121, 121 miles an hour of ball speed. I'm normally like 115 to 117, but when I do this, I get five miles an hour more club head speed. I know it. I know everybody says, so why don't you play that way? I'm working on that, okay? I'm working on that. I got this little knee thing. I'm working on that but I know how to do it. I know when to do it. What also happens when I do it is I hit the ball a little higher. That one apexed at 105. Normally I play at about 90 feet. 
And what happens is my descent angle goes up. That gets near 50. I, I'm typically like 44 to 45. So all these things change quite a bit. My ball speed even has more, my ball speed gets more spin. So I normally play like 52 to 5,400. But when I do this, my backspin goes up to 5,700. So I increase a lot of different things there. Now, I know that I, I kept that arm bent at, at impact, okay? Is it as bent as it was at the top of the swing? The answer is a resounding no. So now we go down. Now all we're paying attention to, and this is what I'm telling you, I'm not paying attention to the fact that I was cross, that the club wasn't on the plane that I wanted to at the top. I don't care about that. Even though I saw that, I'm not worried about that because that's not what I'm working on. And that's one of the things that can happen with you is you can get distracted. Don't get distracted. Focus on what you want to focus on. In this particular situation, what we're doing is we're trying to make sure that that trail elbow stays bent and we're going to keep that bent as long as we can. And we're going to punch the target. We're going to punch it parallel to the ground on the target side. So now when I come through here, is my arm bent right there? Yes, it's bent right there. Is it bent at impact? It's hard to see this, but it's bent slightly. Could I do a better job? I could do a better job. Is that the best I got? No, but it's better. How do you know? Because the ball went faster. That's how I know. Like when it's all said and done, when all these things you're doing, whatever you're doing, and you're asking yourself that question, and maybe you have the V1, maybe you don't. But the ball will tell you everything. And it went faster and it went farther and it went higher and it landed softer. As a result, I know I did what I wanted to do. So when I come in here and I'll show you this because this is just the kind of guy I am. Take that position. I'm going to erase that. I'm going to go back to um, a swing. Oh, let's go back to this swing. I don't know if I made a full swing here. Yeah, pretty full swing. Now I'm going to come in here. So there's there are roughly uh, the same. That's impact. That's me in one position looking one way and me adding these bends. Now, let me tell you the difference. And this is unfortunately going to be our last uh, thing that we're going to talk about. So take this off. I'm going to take my Titleist glove off. And what I want to show you is I want to show you a couple little different things. First, look at where this, um, whoa, that's not what I want to do. Look at where the top of my head is right there. That's, that's, I'm sorry, not the top of my head. That's where the, the trees in the, in the distance are coming into my head. And that's right at the top of, of the white on my Santa hat. You see that right there? Now, if I go over here and I go on the same top of the tree and come over here, what you can see is, is that the top of my Santa hat on the left is at the line. The top of my Santa hat on the right is above the line. And now, when you start to study this and this and this, and this, now all of a sudden, what you can see is, and let me erase all that, what you can see is that now all of a sudden, wow, there's a lot of things that look different. Look at how much more rotation I have back here versus over here. Look at how different that is. And then look at the foot. Look at the heel up over here versus, it's up, but not as much. Look at the knee. Look at how much this knee is kinked in here versus over here. Are they the same? Not at all. Are they similar? Yeah, a little bit. So I feel like I'm doing this massive elbow bend. I'm getting a marginal elbow bend. I get a massive distance uh, increase with marginal uh, change. Okay? So more drills for me, and I could do better at that. More drills for you, and you could do better in that. But what I can promise you is, is that as you start to do this, you're going to get more distance. Okay. Okay. Um, I can't thank you all enough for being a part of the show. I appreciate you all watching so much. Quick reminder, make sure you listen 
this week on a new breed of golf on Sirius XM PGA Tour Radio, 8 a.m. to 10 a.m. Uh, Eastern. We're giving away a bunch of stuff. We've got more poker chips that we're going to give away. We've got golf shoes we're giving away, golf bags we're giving away. Um, we're giving away a bunch of things. So make sure you get on the, in on that. We're going to give away a pin, a, a, a pin golf range finder. We're also going to give away putting mats. Those discounts are going to be in existence all the way through. So we'll continue to, to uh, remind you of that and, uh, and seriously appreciate you all uh, getting behind what our partners are, are doing, whether it's uh, trying to get you the right distance to the, to the uh, target or whether we're getting you the, the, uh, to make more putts. So we appreciate everybody getting a part of that. We also appreciate you getting behind uh, the V1 product. As you can see, it's incredibly handy for us. Before I say goodbye, I want to make sure that you all get a look at the elves that are in uh, the North Pole here working hard away. There's there's uh, there's Gibbsy, Elf Gibbsy, and there's also Elf Ducharme. Um, we all appreciate so much you, you being a part of all this, allowing us to come into your into your place of work or into your home and helping you improve your game. If you have any questions, make sure you reach out to us. Make sure you get involved in um, and tell others about what we're doing. All you got to do is send an email to me at a new breed of golf at michaelbreed.com. We will put you on our, our list of subscribers and we'll continue to push this information out. It's free. It doesn't cost you anything at all. So make sure you're a part of it. I hope everybody has a great weekend and we'll see you on Monday. Enjoy the match.